Hi folks, super quick two minute update. It's gonna be a busy week this week and we've got a lot of trades on, so I'm gonna go through them very quickly. I'll do another update video later on. So we've got nothing on the euro, nothing on the pound. Dolly yen, we're still short. I don't like the way this looks. It looks like it's trying to push higher, but actually we're still in this range and we could do something very similar to this. You see, we sort of try to test the top of the range and then collapse. We're trying to do that again now. So we see a dip, an upward move, in this previous case, we didn't make a new high, and so far right now, we haven't made a new high. So expect a bit of thrash around at these levels, maybe a spike high, and then a move down, or a bearish engulfing candle, or something of the sort. Generally, I don't know which way the dollar is going to go. Dollar index is sort of in between. And what we have on the day chart is a one down, one up. This is a reversal pattern following a move down. So it's possible we found support at these moving averages, like I pointed out last week, and it is probably my favored view on the dollar. That would mean that the euro and the pound will continue to move lower, and one would think dollar yen would then move up. But I think we could see the euro and the pound moving lower, and that will pull the euro yen and the all the yen crosses down. We have nothing on the Australian dollar. We went long a few days ago. We took profit and nothing's happened since then. So that's currencies and we shall have to wait and see how we go. I'm not going to cover all the news releases this week, but there are some. We had non-farm payrolls last week and another bumper number, 310 plus thousand jobs, which is ridiculous. And actually the previous month wasn't revised down that much. So after all these massive gains and revisions, we really don't know where we are on jobs, I suppose. It feels a little bit like the Fed and others maybe are trying to obfuscate the real numbers. Let's go across to NASDAQ. So we're short NASDAQ, we're short S&P, we're short NVIDIA. We're also long Apple and long Tesla. I see in Tesla, we've had a massive pre-market jump up to $170 from 164 on Friday. So we're getting into some profit on that. Apple's just holding up well. And we wanna see these move down, the NASDAQ and the S&P and NVIDIA. Now NASDAQ and NVIDIA have already reversed technically. We've had two daily closes on each of these beneath the 20 period moving average. Not so on S&P, but we have broken out of this ascending wedge on S&P. So, so far so good, I think, on stocks. It's a real mess. Stocks are overbought, incredibly overbought. We're right at the highs. I'm certainly not buying at these levels, although the markets could move higher. I'm not discounting that possibility. Right, on gold, we went short at 23.20. It's now at 23.40. We might end up losing this trade, but it's probably worth a go. We have nothing on silver. I'm sort of hedged on gold. It's a very small position that I have on here and a very tight stop loss. But at the same time, I'm long on Bitcoin and I'm sort of treating these as both the same. In other words, I've actually hedged my short gold with my long Bitcoin. I know that's a wussy's way out, I suppose, but the markets are really difficult at the moment and I'm not picking and betting on any one particular side. Let's go across and have a look at the commodities. Natural gas really hasn't moved anywhere for the last number of days and we're still long. We had a tiny weekend gap down, but we've recovered that. We've moved back to the top of the gap and we'll have to see if we can push up through those moving averages once again this week. I think I favor the long side for sure. Anything below $2 is for me a buy on natural gas. It doesn't mean we won't get back down to 165, 150 and even below that. I'm not discounting that possibility either, but I'm happy with the long positions and I'm happy with the price action so far. We're still long on URA and UEC, the uranium instruments. Nothing's really changed since last week. Cocoa is trying to form a top. We actually retrace 78.6% of this move down from the top to the bottom, not very neatly or cleanly. So you can see we're trying to form a top on Coco. There's the 786 and we reject it from there today. This is a classic topping formation, a rally, pull back, move back up to the 786 and then move down if we hold beneath this recent spike high. Here's the Henry Hubba on the day chart and holding above the 20 period moving average and all the green triangles beneath us. So that looks pretty constructive. And WTI, we're short on this. You can see our entry level, so we're out of the money on it. But we did make a spike high on Friday, collapsed down to the top of the channel today, bounced back up again, but not getting up through there, trying to get through that gap, but not doing it so far. Have a look at my previous videos on WTI and look how I compare that to gold, current gold price, and what we've seen previously on uranium. Right, Bitcoin, we're long from 67,700. We're now at 72,230. I've just taken 50% profit and moved stop losses to break even on Bitcoin, so, so far so good. I think we could actually reach the top of this channel. Let's try and project a path here by dragging this chart around. So if I was to hazard a guess, this would be my sort of idea on Bitcoin. And then to move back down to the center line of the channel and maybe the bottom of the channel. But let's start with that for now and then something like that. So that's my idea on Bitcoin. Let's see how it plays out. We're long on strong. We've got a good early entry. That's our second long entry. We got in long down there before. Now we've got long from over here and aiming for the top of the channel. Something like that. We got an early long on this, so I'm happy with that so far. Nothing on Coinbase, although it is short. I did indicate we should probably look to sell Coinbase. And actually, if Bitcoin turns around and doesn't manage to reach the top of the channel, then we could see even more pressure on Coinbase. We are below the 20 SMA and the 50 SMA on the Coinbase 4-hour chart. And if we switch that to a day chart, 
you can see we're below the 20 period and we've got three red triangles above us. So if you're looking to sell Bitcoin or be short in Bitcoin of some sort, but you don't want to sell the actual Bitcoin, you could perhaps hold on to your long Bitcoin and consider selling Coinbase like I'm doing. And then the South African Rand pairs, well, we've just broken down through these channels. It doesn't bother me. We're at support on the dollar against the Rand. And actually, even though we've broken down through the channel line and the 200 period moving average, we've got further support on the pound Rand down here. Well, have a great trading day, everyone, and I'll speak to you in the next video. And if you're not subscribed to this channel and you like these sort of videos, why not subscribe? And while you're at it, a thumbs up would be great too. Take care.